Hello everybody, welcome back. After that last game, uh, it left much to be desired. I'm going to play another one and hope that it's just as good, if not better. Um, I don't know where though, I'm going to find my next puzzle piece. Um, maybe upstairs, you think? Like up here. Ah, it's open now! Okay, I see you, I get you, I got you. There's a comic book page over there, but what's over here? I can hop over. I wonder if I can hop down. Probably can't. I'm trying. I wanted to show everyone my new ball and tell how big and strong Dad was, but even though all the kids at school had their birthdays there, Mom said we couldn't afford it. It's okay though. She always found a way to make birthdays special. That's a, that's good to hear. That's Outpost 3000, the area we're in right now, which is funny. Oh no. Clown is sad. Moon is mean. Clown builds a ship in space he dream. He goes he go to space and makes the case to meet his face. To eat his face. What? Oh, it's a theater. This is really wacky. I, I see why this would be really expensive. Okay, what am I doing? No, stop. Go back. Uh, he is sad. Um, Moon is mean. Um, the other ship crash lands. Do, do, do. Oh, whoops. What if it's... Yep, that. <laughs> what if it's that way? Yeah, alright. This is a theatrical release, by the way. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for coming by for this viewing. It was very intense uh, writing and storyboarding and, you know, it's just so glad everyone could come. <laughs> what? No. It's just opened up like a whole other area. What is this place? That's cool. That's smart. I like that a lot. <laughs> Moon Rock. Spaceship we're very used to seeing, as well as a uh, Earth. That's wow. <laughs> I enjoy that it's just not letting me go and collect all of the stat or everything that I, I could want to play the games first. It's making me solve these puzzles. It's okay. So essentially, how it worked third game, or no, how it worked in the second game was if I did the puzzles and I unlock the keys. If I did the puzzles first, there was nothing stopping me from just doing all the puzzles and then playing all the games. The third game, it was like you have access to a certain amount of things at a certain amount of time. And then after doing so many games, you unlock the rest of the candles to get you to play the rest of the games. You still had a choice. You still had plenty of variety to play from before you got to the next thing. But, you know, it was there. And the fourth game, you could just play whatever you wanted and you got the keys. Or, like, if you got the stuff you needed to do the next thing. And this, you need to find, like, a gift every time you play a game. That's not a bad thing. Not at all. Uh, it lets you, like, play around in this new, like, little area. And then play your next game. So if you want to play your next game, you're going to have to like choose wisely type of thing. You know what I mean. Um, this was the game I wanted to play. We never left. Um, so I can't wait to play that. On the dark stormy night in 1983, the phone rings to finish the game. So we're going to play that and we're going to hope it good. it's good. The following game heavily utilizes stereo audio. Headphones are highly recommended. We're there. We're there already. If you are streaming or recording gameplay using OBS, please use display capture rather than game capture. This will uh, circumvent issues with screen flickering. That's kind of not good, actually. Thank you for telling me that, but I'm going to avoid that for now. 
until I see the recording myself, or like I'm gonna I'm gonna preview it over on OBS rather than. Why is there screen flickering? Why is that an issue? Maybe I see why. I think I had a problem with this the other with the, with the other game that I played last time. I don't want to use display cap. I really don't want to. So for me being ignorant, I'm gonna start it and keep it on game capture for now. Until it becomes a real issue, and then I'm gonna flip it back. See if it's just an auto save system. Please do uh, do not exit this uh, application when you see this icon above. Unless it'll corrupt everything and break everything. I think I see the screen flickering now. Oh. Written and directed by Connor Rush. I can't move here, can I? Please leave your message after the tone. Uh, hello, this is William, and you don't know me, but your cousin Michael works for me at Claustra Studios, and he has not shown up to work at all this week, and nobody in the office has heard from him. So, of course, I stopped by his house to see if he was okay, and his car was in the driveway, and I swear I thought I saw someone walk by the attic window, but nobody answered the door. Um, but I did find a note on the door, which is why I'm calling you. And it just has your name, number, and a message that says, finish the game. So, um, you know, Michael's known around the office for being uh, a little bit off, but this is strange, like, really strange even for him. And, you know, as I'm sure you know, he typically keeps very to himself, but he has talked a little about you and how you guys used to write the, uh, uh, choose your own adventure stories together so you know I hope you know what this all means and of course I hope Michael is okay but we really need to get in touch with him so when you get in touch with him please tell him to call us at the office uh, okay thanks so much bye bye <laughs> Beep. Game is loading. It is. That's a good start. That's always a great start. Following experience frequently utilizes classic text adventure gameplay. If you find yourself getting stuck, feel free to reference the help menu at any time. That's a good start. I tried playing. What was it before? And I couldn't get it right. What in the world? Okay, I'll just smoke right here then. No consideration for. Whoever's in the house whatsoever. He is a uh, house key years ago. I don't know why, but he insisted I keep it. We haven't spoken in years. Okay. I should get some light in here. It's a box. Mother pizza box. There's pizza boxes everywhere. Put that put that put back. Breaker box. I don't really need to mess with this right now. Yeah, but you just said you wanted to turn on the lights. I think that's quite important. You think? Bathroom door. What sound was it doing here? Tape recorder. Set tape, take and listen. Alright, and good. Okay, 
My name is Dr. Miller. It is January 23rd, 1983. Could you state your name and age? Hey, wh why is this being recorded? This is just for record keeping and review purposes. I promise that these tapes aren't going to leave this office. Okay. So, name and age? Um, Michael Krieger, uh, 32. And what brings you to see me today, Michael? Too. I thought I filled all that out on the paperwork. Yes, but I always like to ask. It's just nice to hear you share it in your own words in person. Well, I, um, I guess I just feel kind of stuck. Could you expand on that at all? Well, a lot of it is work. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm able to work for a video game company. It's, it's what I love to do. I just... Mm. Fuck, I... Oh, just, no, no, it's okay. Say it how you feel it. You don't have to censor yourself. I just... I thought I'd be able to express myself a bit more, you know? I'm, I'm really craving that creative freedom. And I get there's a market for those fantasy games we make, but I, I just feel like I could be making... more. What do you mean by more? Something... Real something that would make you feel something? I don't know. And is this feeling just related to work? No, but it's a big cause of it. Hmm. Okay. So, um, I did want to talk to you about what you wrote in your paperwork. There are certain things that I find concerning. I'd really like if we could talk about that, if you're able. Yeah, could we not? I, at least not yet. I'm, I'm just not... No, no, no. It's okay. I understand. We can circle back to that later, okay? Okay. Anyways, um, I see, like, a lot of glitching in my recording. I hope that's not the case. Anyways, I'm gonna read this now. Dr. Miller suggests that I start running my thoughts into a journal. According to her, it can help me sort through any mo many more difficult thoughts. I hate that term, difficult thoughts. I don't think wanting to cre create my best work is something to be thought of as difficult. I cannot speak. Maybe I'll stick to it, but I don't really see that happening. February 8th, 1983. I just got back home from work, and I'm so sick of being there. I wonder if it stays my vision. I thought when I decided to work in computer games that I would be able to stretch my legs a bit and finally bring my, work, er, my art to the world. But no, they're all so tame. They say my ideas are too dark. It's not too dark. It's horror. It's a difference. If they want to make games about Dungeons and Knights and fucking fantasy quests. I frankly don't care about saving some princess. It's shallow, according to them. Horror isn't marketable. We need to make our quotas. No one will want to play something this twisted. Screw them. I'll do it myself. Alright. So we have a man who wants to make a horror game in 1983. Uh... Probably mixed results if I had to guess. Ooh! There's transcripts and stuff. Ooh, that opened up. Transcripts, journal. I wonder what my inventory button is if I have one. <laughs> Mr. Clean? I can't read that. Really? I can't read the back of the box? I'm a bit saddened by that. Also, oh, like a set. Journal recording. Entry. Okay, this is Dr. Miller. It's currently February 12th, 1983, and I'm talking with Michael Krieger, mm -hmm. age 33. 32. Right, sorry, age 32. How are you feeling today, Michael? I mean, I've been worse. Been up to anything exciting? No, not really. I've been watching a lot of movies, but that's about it. Oh, what movies? Mostly horror movies. Oh, I can't. I can't watch those. I'm a bit too jumpy. Um, why? Why horror movies? I guess the feeling I'm trying to get. It's like I'm so numb. Maybe if I find the right movie, it'll make me feel something. But it's like... It's like none of them are enough. Mm. I can see how that can be frustrating. Yeah. Um, uh, have you, uh... <laughs> been writing in a journal, like I suggested? Oh, yeah. I actually think I'm taken to it a bit more than I expected. Well, that's great to hear. Is there a reason you've had a change of heart about it? I know you weren't super thrilled last time we talked. Yeah. Yeah, I think I found a use for it. That's really great to hear. 
So, um, I did want to ask about where we left off last. I know you don't like to talk about it, but are you having any more thoughts of hurting others, hurting yourself? I, listen, I, I know what I wrote on the papers. It, it sounds bad, but it's more fantasy than anything. It's not like I'm planning on doing anything. They're just, they're just stories. I understand that, but if they continue coming to mind, then... I promise I'm okay. Okay. Journal updated. March 28th. Okay, so this is later. Okay, that's good. Dr. Baylor says I'm using the journal wrong. She says I need to get out of my emotions and my anxieties. I'm not disturbed. I'm just passionate. She doesn't get it. Nobody gets it. I'm the verge of creating the next evolution of horror entertainment. People are just saying my brain is fucked up for some reason. Having these horrid thoughts. It's not like I think that way personally. Is Dar uh, Daro Argentina sadistic because he directed a movie where dancers are getting sacrificed to a cult? No. People call him a genius. How is what I'm doing any different? I'm making a character. April 2nd, 1983. Multi multimedia. That's the key. I figured it out. <laughs> and I like where this is going. I've got a plan in place. I just need to execute. Everyone's going to see that I'm a real artist. This game's going to be different than anyone has ever seen my magnum opus. So can I inspect, inspect it? Oh, there's there's a there's a nine there. Um, what does that mean? Nothing. There's a nine on the back of that one. I'm gonna take a look around and make sure that I didn't miss anything real quick. Is uh. Good enough for time wasting. Really? Really? Oh, that feels weird. Bro, get me to a hundred, dog. This is the horror game you were talking about? Dog, this is nuts. Why am I getting stars for how good I am at beating this game? That's not even the game. Two fifty was two stars. A bit worried what a three stars is. No. Came over, really? 314. <laughs> How long did I spend on that? Probably far too long, if I had to guess. Probably way too long. Are there any more of those? Oh, there's a computer, but I really don't care about the computer right now. I care more about. This around. Have you been seeing everything you need, or have you been missing something? Some sort of clue? No, I didn't want to. Want to back out of that real quick? Um. Camera, photograph. Picture of a woman reading in her living room from an outside window. Who's taking these photos? Keep your phrases simple. Some commonly uh, commands like exam, go to, followed by your target. Well, these are far not the only commands. If you're unsure what to do, example, go to the door. You must specify if you would like to use an item. Um, is action item or action object item. Unlock the door with the key. Do not punctuate your commands. You should complete it. Uh, that's the area. Go back. It's a Polaroid? Okay, I mean... Fire us off. Alright, okay. 
Please insert data storage device. Okay. What is that supposed to mean? Like, I don't understand what it's supposed to mean, but like, still. Oh, okay, there's a, there's a code somewhere, hold on. Yeah, yeah, it's telling me that there's something on the back of everything that I find. There was a 9 at one point. I did find a 9. Somewhere. Oh, another journal entry. April 20th. Okay. Everything is in place. I, have, I haven't slept in days. But this is going to be worth every second of exhaustion. I keep getting calls from work asking where I've been. I don't see the point in answering. They never understood. So why would they start now? I'm about to make a better game than any of those assholes could ever imagine. There are a lot of risks involved, but this is some really good stuff. Time to create true horror. I've picked my playtester. I need someone special. Someone who felt that if anyone would understand the importance of what I'm doing... He didn't uh, like my ideas much when he uh, we were just writing stories, but I matured, and I know how to execute. Everything is perfect. Okay, nine six. Some more cleaning supplies. Nine six something. And here's how we determine that. Uh, this was made. In February, so 9 6. Um, there's nothing here. Oh no, wait. That's 9. Okay, so there's that one. We're missing one, I think, somewhere. Ah, there's one. I've been at work, or I've been at work plenty, uh, pretty relentlessly trying to make something great. A lot of the work, uh, just been watching movies. Halloween, Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, okay. Massacre, The Shining, etc. They're fine, but it needs something else. I'm not sure what. When I watch Jason Voorhees chasing campers, I feel nervous. Sure, but scared. I feel tense. I feel worried for the character. But I know what uh, that I'm okay. So I don't feel that horror. I don't feel like I'm in any danger. It feels so distinguished. Plus, it's really diff uh, difficult to capture the visual aspect with the tech I... Uh, I have available. All I really have is text, uh, text, text, and more text. I'm not much of a reader, but maybe I should check out the Shining novel. Could translate better to my games. I thought more about it. I think I was wrong. Maybe the technology won't allow much uh, in way of visual horror, but that doesn't mean I can't find another way. I keep trying, but I think I'm onto something. I got it. Okay, so what he's like looking for is a horror game. He's trying to develop a horror game in a text-based industry where everything's dominated by text-based right now. It's 1983. Um, and he wants something like these movies, but he can't find it because the tech hasn't evolved yet. So, okay, 196, I think. So there's that. Photograph. Photograph in the whole house that I can't see because the light's not on. I don't even know where the light switch is. Oh, there's the light switch. Oh, I can set tape. I, I like listening to these. We are recording. I guess this is the first one. This is Dr. Miller. It is March 20th, 1983. And I'm speaking with Michael Krieger, age 32. Krieger. How are you doing today, Michael? Actually, um, I'm doing pretty good. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I think I've got something figured out. What do you mean by that? Like, uh, you remember last session how I talked about feeling stuck? I think I found a way out. Oh, and, and how's that? I decided to make my own game. Something that no one at the company would understand. It's gonna be amazing. And, uh, what does everyone at work think uh, about this? I... I haven't gone in a, in a few days. Uh, and why is that? I just... I, I, I feel stifled there. Now I go back, but I need this time to work on my work. I need to focus on this one thing. Well, I'm glad 
you found something. But please remember, you need to take care of yourself. Too. I know. I, I know. Trust me, this is all going to be great. Well, it's, it's great that you found something. And don't I know it. And are you still writing in that journal? Oh, yeah, yeah. Would I be allowed to see him? Not just yet. It's, it's, it's not quite finished yet. Finished? Yeah, it's not done. I'm not... I'm not sure what you mean. Um, the journal isn't exactly something you finish. It's more like a continuous stream of thought. I know, just... just... I'll let you look soon, okay? he's talking about oh. I need to massacre nine eight okay that's um that's a bit concerning why you would name it that and that exact date but okay back out zoom in nineteen eighty three he's got the plot right too You feel heavy with the, both the weight of your cargo and your co uh, conscious. As your bare toes gazed to salt beneath you through the worn shoes, you marched onward. You knew exactly where to go next. The axe you lugged behind you made a screeching noise as the metal grinded across the street. You arrive at your destination, the old miller. A quaint, rustic home with two floors. There's a door directly in front of you, beside you... On your left is an old car. To your right, it's attached to the back of the car. Axe. Uh, you axe. Use axe. Go to the door. Beautiful shade of red. The architecture sets the scene perfectly. What's happening feels like a true moment. Doors locked. Hit. Door. Hit. Axe. Open door with axe. Right. Oh, shoot. Break. No, too much noise. On the back. Well, let's control the speed of text. Okay, got you. Go to. Oh, car. Sedan, there's a story to this car that you can't quite put your finger on. It smells an old uh, scrapyard of metal. You look through the window. Break window. Break window with... With axe. So the vehicle is a set of keys. Grab keys. Go back. Go backyard. The grades trim perfectly. The patio is dimly lit in a dying light fixture. The back door is sitting. Go. Use key. Open door with key. Of course, it's that key. <laughs> I took a guess. I took a guess. Your trip to the circuit. Maybe a breaker box somewhere. Oh, and now you have a flashlight. Yeah, you were like, ah, oh, no, I don't need to mess with the breaker box. 
Hi. Tea kettle? I kind of use the tea kettle for something. I kind of wanna, you know. There's a cat here, evidently, too. Can't tell what that says. The door is blocked up. Where's the back door? That was the front door. I don't like where this is heading. Journal entry. What? Where was there? Journal entry. Alright. I guess. No, thank you. Anyways, back to my video games. You step into the house, it feels almost like your, ho or your home. It's such a nostalgic structure. You can almost feel the lives that were created and lost by this house. You want to be a part of that story. You crave to be a part of that story. Directly in front of you stands the staircase leading upstairs. To your immediate left is the kitchen. Further onward is the living room. Kitchen. Got to kitchen. What's the kitchen? It's very dirty tile floor. A uh, bowl of fruit on the table. You hate it here. You want to go back? Then go back. It's a bit of the living room. It's another part of that story. Pictures are hung against the walls showing a happy elderly couple. Young children are seen scattered amongst the photos. Grandchildren. You love them all. You're part of this family and their story and the story in your head. Creep slowly up the stairs. You try it with every ounce of willpower you can muster not to let your axe bump the stairs. You smile on your face. It's almost painfully the excitement is unbearable. You shake your eagerness up the stairs, only straight paths to the bedroom. So you get the bedroom doors cracked open ever so slightly. You could feel the mild breeze of a running fan from inside. This is your time. Walking inside, you step with such care not to make any spot, uh, spots on the floor creak. You sit in an elderly couple. Laying on the bed, they look at, at so at peace. The man sleeps uh, comically with his mouth hanging open. The woman lays flat on her stomach. Look at the you approach the bed. You see the man's chest rise up and down so slowly, so slowly. It's your time. Kill the elderly couple with axe. Well, good thing I did. Raise your axe above your head. You remember it being heavy. This feels right. You grip the base of the wooden handle with the greatest of care before flinging the metal wedge down to the man's stomach. His eyes jolt open as he flings himself for a moment, trying to sit upright. I back out before I read the rest of that because someone just knocked on the front door. Actually, I don't want to. I want to read the rest of that. Screw you. The woman wakes up immediately. She clearly uh, destroyed your hus uh, her husband. You wake up uh, slowly. She's so helpless. You raise the axe over your head with the same care. Rush it down between the woman's eyes. Uh, rush like uh, this is uh, this is your family. You're any part of the story. The man stops. The man stops choking. Hi. Hello. Ah, oh, you left blood behind! That's not a good sign at all. This is Dr. Miller. I'm speaking with Michael Krieger, age 32. It is April 16th, 1983. How have you been doing, Michael? 
Michael, I asked, Please. how are you? Don't act like you care. Excuse me? I know you don't. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sure where this is coming from. <laughs> I found the thing that makes me feel better. And you tell me it's wrong. I... Michael, I understand your frustration. But this project you're working on seems unhealthy. I understand you're passionate about this horror game, but some of the things you're writing seem sadistic. And I think it would be best if Don't we... Don't you dare tell me what's best for me, you fucking bitch! Um, I... I think we should take a step back and... No, I'm done with this! I found what makes me feel better, and I'm gonna stick with it. I'm about to create a masterpiece in gaming. Now, I'm creating a masterpiece of any art form. Why would you want to take that away from me? I'm sorry, Michael, but I don't think this is good for you. Don't pretend like you know what's good for me. You know I've spent my whole life just wanting to create. I just want so bad to let the world know what's going on inside my brain, and I finally found the message I want to send. I'm gonna be the horror auteur of the fucking millennium. Do you know what it's like to be told your entire life that your ideas are shit? It's too dark. It's disturbed. It's not. It's art. And I'm ready to show the world what my art can be. Huh. I think what makes it disturbing is that the time that it takes place, which is 1983, this is just a new concept. And the way that he was... that he's hitting it, um... It's not good. He's hitting it from the murderer's perspective. Um, computer game, we never left. Nice. Um, but he's hitting it from the murderer's perspective. But if you were hitting it from a survivor's perspective, then maybe he might have something that wasn't so, that's not so controversial. But then it's, it's a game. I don't really need to be thinking that hard, but I am anyways. You trek along the road in the dead of night. The cold air fills your lungs as you creep onward. A trail of blood streaks behind you like a slime of a snail. You can't shake the grin off your face. The axe you drag behind you makes a clanking sound as it hits the concrete with every one of your steps. It's the most beautiful rhythm you've ever heard. You come upon an all too familiar house, home, a single, a single live, uh, level house with an attic for storage. So many hours spent inside. Work, work, work. It's never enough. However, this house is not empty. He is here. To your left is an unfamiliar car. Look ahead and see the front door. I want to do something, uh, but I want to look at the axe first. You don't want to look at the axe? Axe. Um... I guess I can't. Um, front door. It's been left unlocked. I'm terrified. But I might see. Okay, there's nothing. Okay, there's nothing. It's still terrifying. But there's nothing. Uh, good. It's nicer than yours. I hate it. The interior. Uh, slash. You thrust the wedge of your axe to the car's tires. They let out a satisfying pop. He's not going anywhere. Check. Tires. Can I check an axe, actually?
I'm spelling it wrong. Thank you. I got up. He's in the house. Step through the doorway to the laundry room. The smell of detergent fills your nose. More laundry will need to be done soon enough. Then he's the coffee room. Coffee room is quaint. Small box of the room and table the chairs. It's like you said, circuit breaker. No, not yet. Give him time. I want to go out and go find him. He's in the kitchen right now. Right? This is... I like games like this, but uh... Point questioning it now. I shut that door, right? Ah, wait, I have an idea. Garage door. I'll check the garage door here in a second. I'm gonna break it open with the axe. And then we go out and see what's in the garage. You stand in front of the garage door. Wood boards. Maybe it's time for him to see. Put your force in a great swing. The boards are all split in your by hand. The garage is open. Come and see. I'm not a fan of this. I thought it was just a dead cat. The art. I thought it was just the cat, and I was gonna be like, that's bad, but that's that's like not the worst it could be. Michael's cat. Sabrina. Her intro <laughs> splattered all over the car. I feel sick. He is outside of her area? There's another note somewhere. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. Hmm. 
This is just... Ooh, so terrifying. Oh, no. Is there any, like, paper or anywhere I can look at that I'm missing? I really hope there isn't. An attic key? It's all sort of a sick game. I don't even know if I want to go up there. Yeah, there were just too many details he knew. can't get up from here. Into the hallway. The carpet is dull. The walls are bland. To your left is the bathroom. This is the bedroom. And directly in front of you. Uh, behind you is the living room. bathroom. It feels like it's a part of, the, of a past life. You can't wait for uh, that life to be over. There's not much uh, for you to do here. Behind you is the hallway. I slashed my tire, so I screwed up big time. I'm dead here, no matter how, how you slice it. It's one safe space. All of your work leading to this. As you look into the room, reminiscing on all of your uh, falling failings you understand now okay so we just told him to go kill an elderly couple that's a bit sad isn't it he killed a bunch of people before I interacted with this but yeah oh I can't you shouldn't go up yet you need to make this just right Let's dim the lights Hallway. Living room. On room. It's the coffee room, is it? the switch. There's a mechanical click before the world becomes drenched in darkness. Everything is perfect. It's been so many hours. It's been marveling at your work. All of this has led to this moment. Their lives are a set piece and you're an art to wear. Step slowly to the attic's ladder, one foot in front of the other, each step making a subtle creaking sound. You pull yourself up using the axe for leverage. All around you, the past works. None have held the same feeling as this. This is special. Directly opposite you across the room is a man on the computer. Step closer to the man. He appears to be sweating, shaking. You know you've done it. This is your magnum opus. You feel your chest tighten with the excitement. You've never felt this way in your life. It's addicting. Stand in the center of the attic, the man's still in front of you. 
You want to get closer. Take another step closer. The man's posture is tightened. You can almost see the hairs on the back of his neck stand on the end. It's pure, so helpless. Your mouth waters. You step forward until you nearly bump into the man's seat. Your smile hurts so badly, you grip your axe so tightly that your hands begin to burn. You've never felt more alive. You try your best to contain yourself, but you're a verge of animalistic. You're on the verge of being animalistic. It's euphoria. That's euphoria. You're sure you feel your hot breath on his neck. You're an artistic genius. You're standing right behind the man. Let him move. Let him go. Kill yourself. So I like the way how it didn't take that one. Gets, you know, I'm trying to make sure. There's no. I'm dead here. Can't do this with your bare hands. Drop axe. Kill with the axe. Ever so slightly. But over your head. You think to yourself. We never left. Do it! Being lazy, just okay. There you go. Please give me credits. I want to know if I'm right about the voice actor. <laughs> oh, okay. I spent nearly an hour on this game by accident. Whoops, my bad. I, I would have loved a game with that type of, like, level of gore, I'm not gonna lie, but I got something else instead. Uh, it's not that I'm saying this is bad, because it's good, but... What? Did it go even higher than that? We never left. I don't know. I don't know how to take what to take from that. Created for Dread X Collection 5. Developed by Fry Games. Fire Games. Presented by Dread XP. Written and directed by Connor Rush. Programmed and designed by Connor Rush. Well done, Connor Rush. Well done. Art, di art direction, Connor Rush. Gotta give a claps off to Connor Rush. Sound of the night by Nate. <laughs> Credits. Parting words? I want to see. Do I have to go through the whole credits again? I do. I don't want to go through the whole credits again just to see. I, I've, I've, I have footage to go through that I can see who did what and what did what. But uh, I don't need parting words either, I don't think. I think we're good. Turn to Outpost 3000. Alrighty, I have some things I want to talk about that game. Of course, uh, Collection 5 is breaking as we speak. Anyways, it's fine. Finish the game. 
they would protect me even when the sky is dark. Anyways, I have some I have some stuff to talk about. That was I don't like I mean I like text adventure games. I want to play more of them on the channel. I do because I see a bunch of the playthroughs and stuff with them and they look cool and I think they'd be fun. But, like, I played, I th can't remember what it was, but I couldn't figure out how to play one of the games that was text adventure based. And I was doing it, I was recording, and it just, I tried for 15 minutes. I could not get it to work. That being said, when I heard text adventure based, I kind of got a little sad. But then everything started to work. And then everything started to get interesting. It was very easy to see where it was going, I'm not going to lie. But, but... I enjoyed it. I think I think it was fun. Uh, voice act voice acting top notch. Um, well done on that. Absolutely well done. Story was simplistic. Like I don't want to say it was simplistic, because it was something interesting. Like uh, someone making a game in 1983, and slowly like building upon that to become slowly insane for the art that he's quote unquote creating. That's that's good. That's smart. Um, it was simplistic, but good. I'm going to call it that. It was simplistic. It was easy to tell where everything was heading, but it was interesting the whole ride through, I like to think. I know there was a lot of times where I kind of just sat there and listened to the dialogue and stuff. You know. But yeah, I just wanted to, like, listen to it. It's good. I liked it. You know. And when the game is self-aware, you know, again, it was kind of cliche. Like, you see it a bunch of times, but like, hey... You know, it was good. I liked it. I think it was well done. Um, I know I got distracted for a while playing a little mini game there. Um, that's always interesting to see little mini games in a full fledged like creation. Like they aren't the whole goal; they're just there, you know, and they exist and they work. It's always cool. But anyways, I'll stop talking. I think that was pretty good. I think it was interesting. One of the more welcome takes into this, I guess. I don't know what the words are. But, um, yeah, uh, I'm done here for now. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys suggest what you wanted to play, please leave it down in the comment section below. In the meantime, I will see you guys in the next episode of whatever I make. Bye.